There's something about our ancient trees that inspires wonder. They are rich in history and culture. Ancient trees and the historic wood pasture, parkland, orchards and hedgerows they inhabit are some of the most exciting and important habitats for wildlife. But they are under threat. There are over 2,000 species of fungi, invertebrates, bats, lichen and moss that share a mutually beneficial relationship with trees. In this series of short films, we talk briefly about the ecology of trees and wood pasture and some of the species that share their life cycle. We offer general advice on how to manage this special habitat with these species in mind and pointers to further information and expert advice. We hope that these films will improve understanding and that you will join with us in managing this habitat for the benefit of these species. By working together, we can ensure that they'll be around for future generations. There are a huge range of invertebrate species that are associated with this sort of habitat, dead and decaying wood. In the UK alone, there are around 2,000 species, mainly beetles and flies, that are associated with this sort of habitat. These species have different life cycles and requirements, coinciding with the stages of tree ageing. These saprozoic invertebrates are also dependent on centuries of continuity of the same habitat. Invertebrates have close and beneficial relationships with trees and lots of other species. They rely on fungi and microbes for food, and also to break down wood into more digestible materials. This frees up minerals and nutrients that the tree can use once again. Decaying wood comes in many varieties and is created by natural ageing processes in living trees. The single most important wood decay resource for invertebrates is a large standing living tree with decay in the central or heartwood. Two important features are wood mould and rot holes. Wood mould is the rarest of the wood decay habitats. It's a mixture of decaying wood, litter and fungal hyphae at the base of hollow trunks or stumps and in cavities. It is found in trees old enough to develop dead wood, when sufficient time has passed for the fungi to decay and compost this wood. Wood mould provides relatively constant temperature and humidity, and supports some of the rarest insects, such as the royal splinter cranefly, known from just Windsor Forest and a site in Slovakia, and the endangered violet click beetle, which is believed to be one of the final specialist wood decay invertebrate species to colonise a tree. Rot holes are smaller cavities in the trunk and branches in which debris and rainwater accumulate. They provide a habitat for invertebrates, such as a bumblebee mimicking hoverfly, whose larvae develop in wet rot holes in old beech and ash trees. A diverse age structure of living woody plants will ensure continuity of wood decay habitats. It's also important to retain trees that have decay features such as decaying limbs, rot holes and cavities. Pollarding younger trees can close the generation gap and extend their life. Keep dead wood on site, let it lie or stand in a variety of conditions, such as shade, partial shade and full sunlight. Invertebrates need a sufficient number of trees, particularly ancient or veteran trees, to maintain their populations. Keep as many veteran trees as possible, allowing them to age and die naturally. Connectivity is really important. Saprozoic invertebrates are really poor at moving to new areas of habitat. Many of the invertebrates associated with decaying wood only use it in their larval form. As adults, they require additional resources, such as nectar and pollen. Keep or plant thorny shrubs, such as hawthorn and umbellifers, like cow parsley, close to old trees and decaying wood. We need to think about reducing habitat fragmentation, either by promoting future veteran trees growing new trees or encouraging natural regeneration. The environment around trees is crucial. Receding areas of grassland, using non-organic fertilizers and herbicides is detrimental, disrupting mycorrhizal fungi and making trees more susceptible to stress. Maintain any traditional grazing regimes with appropriate stock levels. Avoid supplementary feeding and worm or parasite treatments, except where vital for livestock health. Limit heavy disturbance beneath the canopy of veteran and ancient trees to avoid damage to roots or trunks. A barrier or mulching around a tree, in line with the perimeter of the canopy, will also form a boundary for ploughing or slurry spreading, which can damage roots and mycorrhizal fungi. 